Hey gang, Canadian Computer Collector here, and we are currently sitting in traffic on the way to the bank to grab some Cassius Clay, if you will. I've struck a deal with a local gentleman who I believe is closing out a business. I'm pretty excited. This is some cool gear. We're gonna give us the opportunity to do some good review videos. And uh, you know! Anyway, I'm here in Winnipeg's Exchange District, starting to regret wearing a sweater. I'm also now walking the opposite direction to do my best to avoid people. Lots of neat stuff in this neighborhood. They call it Old Chicago Town. Well, I don't think they actually do, but it is inspired by Chicago. Similar architecture of the era. Have a look around. We just got a whole whack load of machines, two 27 inch IMAX and two Mac Pros uh, for one screaming deal. Thank you so much and shout out to Video Pool, which is a local organization here. It looked like we were picking up some of the older editing stations that they used to use. We picked up a 2013 iMac with what I believe to be 32 gigs of RAM and a 2015 with 16 gigs of RAM. Not sure about dedicated graphics or anything like that or hard drive sizes, but that's something we'll find out once we get back home. The Mac Pros, one of which apparently it turns on, but it will not boot. So it shows signs of life, just not living. Uh, the other one boots fine. Way too hot to drive without the window open. This is me driving a car. Vroom, vroom. Check me out, guys. to move the car. Everything has been loaded in. We are good to go. All right, so with the car in its parking spot, resting snugly, it's time to lay out our hall and have a look at everything. Voila, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another uh, Canadian Hannibal Lecter video. So I think the plan for today is going to be uh, to clean these machines up, install some operating systems on them because each of them have been just freshly wiped much like my buttock take a look at what the specs are and see what all it is that they need do a couple videos with them you know bring them to a family reunion invite them to a wedding we might even keep one bibbidi boop boop oh right they came with keyboards too check this out Ta -da! Yeah, unfortunately we got a Microsoft mouse, an HP mouse, and then two with the rollerball. Not my favorite, but I love those aluminum keyboards, so... Ain't that the little dainty! Alright, so first order of business. Let's clear off the table, make some room so that we can set up a little test bench here, and install a few operating systems on these Apple machines. We gotta get some power and some keyboard and mouse, and, uh... I don't know, there's a lot of people yelling outside because it's like the first day of 25 Celsius. Uh, but I wanted to get the boot chime, so. There it is. There it is, with the neighbors yelling. So this is a good sign. This little flashing folder with the question mark means that we just need to install an operating system, but the system is functional, and there is in fact a drive in there. Ain't that the little dainty? It's just, uh, you know, it needs to be booted into recovery mode. Now a machine this new can use internet recovery, which is a fantastic thing, extremely convenient. It'll just download the um, operating system that the machine was sold with. Then you can go to disk utility, format the disk, and then in this case, install Mac OS Sierra. Right onto the 24 gig SSD. Now this came with a terabyte spinning disk and a 24 gig SSD, I think that's the Little fusion drive concept at play. Uh, anyway, as you can see, we were successful. And in a moment, we'll be able to take a look at the stats. Okay, this iMac is a late 2015 with 16 gigs of RAM, a 3.2 gigahertz Intel Core i5 with an AMD Radeon R9. Oh, nice. Well, it's got dedicated graphics, so it's better than most of these things. And that is it for the 2015 27-inch iMac. Kind of a nice machine, bit of a weak graphics card, but hey, that's better than onboard, am I right? And sometimes the music just hits you. All right, so no boot chime. A 
also no surprise, I guess. And of course, same deal. Let's go ahead and put her into recovery mode. Once you're a jet, you're always a jet. Mom always told me life is like a pack of camel cigarettes. You're gonna die. Check it out, camel cigarettes. It's Joe Camel. From what I understand, that's one smooth character. Look, I think we can all agree that Joe Camel deserves more, all right? He was unceremoniously pitched from the public spotlight uh, and now lives in the shadows of his cigarettes, I guess. But what if, who is Joe Camel? Who's the real Joe Camel? Maybe he's a hard-working guy. I don't know. Do you know? Anyway. June stopped in to say hi to Joe and uh, check out the Mavericks install, which just so happens to be the OS that this machine internet recoveries to, as we'll put it. So here we go, clicking more info. We have a three and a half gigahertz Intel Core i7 with 32 gigs of RAM and a four gigabyte GeForce GTX 780M. So this one's got a little more beef to her. Unfortunately, she's two years older than the 2015, but like I said, four gigabyte video card. I mean, that's that's substantial, especially for a 2013. All right, well, get out your neckties and your whiskey carafes because it's time to get professional. We are on to the Mac Pros. First up is the 2008, as it turned out. I thought it was a 2009 uh, based on what was told to me and the uh, transaction, but turned out to be a 2008. Now this machine, you'll notice, boots to this white screen with the loading bar, and then something funny happens. It shuts off. So I reached out to Jay from the House of Moth, and he asked me to see if there was a thin loading bar or a thick one. We determined it was a thin one, which means that it's probably an issue with the drive, but at the time of filming this, I had no idea. So initially, I thought, hey, let's go look online and see what could cause this. One of the things I saw was perhaps the PRAM battery causing an issue. So we replaced the PRAM battery with a brand new one, nice little CR2032, and then popped back on the video card and the side case and tested it out again. And lo and behold, it booted up, it went straight to a white screen, a white screen with a thin loading bar, and then it just basically shut itself off again. So I put it aside and I set up the 2012. As you can see, that footage was lost because sometimes I don't do things properly. Uh, here we have the 2012 plugged in. Uh, now these machines don't really have the, the uh, proudest boot chime. It's kind of a weak sound, so I didn't really bother including it here. Anyway, we get into uh, disk utility, erase the disk, and then go into an install of High Sierra uh, through recovery mode, which is Again, one of the greatest things ever. The system just downloads the OS for you. Anyway, setting up the machine so that we can log in and get a look at the actual specs. This is the part that we've been waiting for. Mucho exciting. So here we go. We have a mid-2012 Mac Pro with two 2.4 gigahertz, six-core Intel Xeon processors, 12 gigs of DDR3, and a one gigabyte HD 5770. And uh, let's pull out that 2008 again, because as, uh, as, uh, I think that something can be done here. Now, my theory, and uh, the same with Jay's, is that it's just a bad drive. So what I'm going to do is put in this 500 gig SSD from Western Digital and try and do a fresh install of El Capitan, which at the time would have been an appropriate um, operating system for this machine of this era. So of course, we're gonna set up the monitor, get everything plugged in and hit the power. Uh, and hopefully what we'll see here is just an empty folder or the icon with the question mark, which is exactly what we get, which is awesome news. This machine is not broken. In goes a bootable install of El Capitan, one that I fixed up just a moment before. And uh, I was all excited to install it and then check this out. It threw up an error, uh, an error saying that the uh, copy of El Capitan that we have was either corrupted or tampered with when downloading. 
Now, at first I thought that there was a problem with my USB stick, so I rebuilt it and tried it again and we got the same error. And then I found online that there could be an issue with the date. So currently the date on the machine is showing 2001 and that's because we replaced the PRAM battery. So that makes sense. We switch it back to 2022, but what date that would have uh, the capability of installing El Capitan. And uh, lo and behold, it looks like everything is working. Imagine that. Thumbs up. Anyway, left the machine to kind of cook on its own, to sort of stew in its own juices while the operating system installed. And uh, what do you know? We got a working $40 Mac Pro. Now, let's find out what the actual hardware inside this machine is. Uh, so we got an early 2008 with two 2.8 gigahertz quad-core Intel Xeons with four gigs of RAM, a 500 gig SSD, and 256 megabyte HD 2600 XT. Brutal. Now we do have to remember this is 2008, so it's a uh, three comma one. But anyway, uh, those are the machines, and onward and upward. Here we are uh, wiping everything down with a nice layer of Windex, because these had been handled by many different hands, and you know, COVID or not, uh, yeah, greasy fingerprints just look nasty. So once we get these things cleaned up, the next thing to do with them is gonna be to start producing some videos. We're gonna be doing uh, reviews of how these machines function in 2022, if they're worth purchasing or keeping as a hand-me-down. I know that there's gonna be a lot of people in the future getting 2008 and 10 and 12 and 13 machines uh, for free and even you know in a couple years begin the 2015 as well and let me just say the 5k retina display on that 2015 iMac is oof, so juicy so probably one you'd want to hang on to as a hand-me-down anyway with a little bit of Windex you can get these things looking fantastic and uh, I for one am really happy with this purchase but you know I'll tell you more about that in a second for now, take a look at my grill. Well, gang, after many days of dicking around, we finally made it to the end of this video. Now, uh, the 2008, we paid 40 bucks for because it just wouldn't start. Uh, the 2012, we paid $250 for. And then the late 2013 and the late 2015 IMAX collectively uh, brought the final cost of everything up to a thousand dollars. So we're looking at 290 for the two Mac Pros and 710 for both of the IMAX. A fantastic deal. We're talking Canadian dollars here. Uh, so overall, that's more like $778.84 American dollars. Shout out to Video Pool, local nonprofit media group. They help people produce their own films by offering editing stations and renting equipment out. Um, they were getting rid of some of their old surplus tech, which is what I happened to pick up. Gave it to me for a great price, so I have to say thank you so much one more time to them. And while we're thanking people, I do want to also thank my patrons. Uh, <clears throat> as of right now, that stands as Justin Morgan, Ron's Computer Vid, Starbuck Tech, Adam M, Group Ride, Dave's Vintage Apple Tech, Trina Conrad, Garth Beagle, Mac84, and Ethan Palomero. Ethan was the original patron on this channel, so thank you, Ethan for starting the whole trend yourself. I'm the Canadian Computer Collector. I couldn't thank you more for making it this far into the video if you are still watching. If you're interested in supporting the channel, check out the links in the description for our social media, uh, Buy Me Coffee, and Patreon. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to do anything ever. And uh, without further ado, let's just call it here, you know? Stay tuned for more great things. Don't forget to check out our old videos.